for five minutes. Madam Speaker, currently California businesses are facing a significant tax increase, thanks in part to a high-ranking state official who allowed the tax dollars they'd already paid to be stolen. It's an incompetence tax, a price private citizens are being forced to pay for their government's failures. I'd like to take a moment to explain how this happened, but I'll lead with the punchline. The state official who squandered these funds allowing a fraud of historic proportions, is somehow now up for a major promotion. President Biden has nominated Julie Su, former head of the California Labor and Workforce Development Agency, to be the next U.S. Secretary of Labor. The predicament that small businesses in California now find themselves in, facing double taxation to compensate for the government's singular negligence, is another example of why this nomination is so ill-considered. It is a warning as to what all Americans have in store if Julie Su is confirmed. Stepping back, the California Unemployment Insurance Fund is the source for paying out unemployment insurance claims honored by California's unemployment office, known as the EDD. The fund is ordinarily maintained through a tax levied on California businesses. New employers are assigned a 3.4% UI rate for two to three years, and after that, a business's contribution tax varies. It's somewhere between 1.5 and 6.2% for the current year. In times of economic duress, when the fund is paying out significantly more than is coming in, the federal government has the option of loaning money to states to cover the payment deficit. California had to take out such a loan during the COVID business shutdowns and took on by far the most debt of any state. The current debt amounts to $18.8 billion. This was because of the huge volume of claims, yes, but also because of a staggering amount of fraud. A coalition letter from dozens of chambers of commerce in California notes, the Unemployment Development Office proved ill-equipped for the rapid increase in claimants. After numerous oversight hearings and analyses of EDD's failings, it is clear that EDD's failings added further to the UI fund's insolvency. By failing to prevent fraud and instead distributing funds to fraudulent claimants, and by mistakenly distrib distributing overpayments to legitimate claim overpayments to legitimate claimants. The letter goes on, although EDD and local law enforcement have attempted to recover some of these mistaken distributions, recovery rates appear to be less than 10% of the mistaken distributions. In other words, these mistakes at EDD added to the UI fund deficit. The total scale of EDD fraud in California is estimated at $32.6 billion. This unprecedented loss was almost entirely preventable if Julie Su had taken basic fraud prevention measures. A January 2021 report from the California State Auditor notes that the EDD fraud occurred for three main reasons. First, EDD waited about four months to automate a key anti-fraud measure. Second, EDD allowed claimants to collect benefits even though they were using suspicious addresses. In one case, over 1,700 claims came from a single address. Third, EDD removed a key safeguard against improper payments without fully understanding the significance of the safeguard. Further, the state auditor reports EDD did not bolster its fraud detection measures until months into the pandemic despite repeated warnings and did not reliably track suspicious claims and resolution to determine the effectiveness of its fraud prevention tools. By the way, if you're wondering where all this money, $32.6 billion, went, the CEO of LexisNexis Risk Solutions has this to say, 70% of that money left California. It left this country. It went to transnational criminal groups that have used that money for nefarious purposes to harm our democracy. Some of that money has been used in sex trafficking and child extortion. At this point, California is one of only four states in the country that hasn't repaid its debt to the federal government. So now, tax-paying businesses are on the hook. Because in the case of fund insolvency for two consecutive years, as is the case here with California, federal law mandates an automatic increase in payroll taxes that amounts to $21 per employee. 
The tax continues to ratchet up by $21 per employee. Each year, the fund remains insolvent, with a maximum tax increase of $434 per employee per year. Now, one might ask, why did California not repay its debt to the federal government last year when it had a $97.5 billion surplus? And there's no good answer to that question. I've actually joined with Representative Obernolte to call on California's governor and the legislature the time's to repay the loan so the burden doesn't fall on employers. And I'm calling on the United States Senate Gentleman, to consider this a case study in what we don't want for our country. Thank you, and I yield back.